Bradford early morning. The Mohammedan call to the faithful goes out to 16,000 of her citizens. They are Pakistanis, part of the million newcomers to England, a country where racial discrimination is growing. Bradford is usually held up as the leading light in the treatment of immigrants. Tonight then, Yorkshire versus Pakistan in a new kind of match. Well, there's a story of the Pakistani who went back home and he was passing through a village that was very quiet and only sparsely populated. And on his return journey, the village was packed. And he said, what's going on here? And somebody said, it's Bradford's holiday week. Jokes about colour are common in Bradford, one of the few places which has paid more than lip service to the problem of Britain's new citizens. They're only 2% of our population, yet they form 40% of our national health service. Our transport services and our basic industries would buckle without them. But the first annual report of the Race Relations Board to be published at the end of this month makes uncomfortable reading. In industry, housing, insurance, mortgages, the colour bar is growing. And there are demands for new laws banning all discrimination. Employers and unions have joined in uneasy wedlock against introducing laws to force integration. They want the solution to be a voluntary one, to be able to say, don't call us, we'll call you. In Bradford, the call was for Labour and they got the Pakistanis. In such numbers that the afternoon train from London was known locally as the Orient Express. In Pakistan, the average annual income is £20 a head. In mills like Westcroft's, with overtime, they make that in a week. Little wonder they mortgaged land, borrowed and scrounged to raise the £140 airfare to come to Bradford, which loomed like the promised land. We have about 240 uh, coloured uh, employees here, out of a total uh, number of employees of about 370. It's about a ratio of 2 to 1. Um, quite frankly, we just can't do without coloured labour in the uh, textile trade. For managing directors like Tom Saul, their future is limited. And I cannot think that, uh, at least uh, on the, in the present generation, that there's any possibility that these people will come to the top. Possibly in a few years, you could see these people in as, as foremen. But uh, I cannot see them at a sort of executive level. After some early resentment, relations are now reasonable on the floor. These are, we've got here are all good, clean lads, you know, no, no dirty habits, I mean. They're good workers, they're better than some white men. You, have, uh, I mean, you can get a bad crew of white men, can't you? But uh, at the moment, we've got a good crew. The night shift's a good crew. The, he has no trouble on the night turn with his. So uh, that's how we, you know, we, we get on quite well with them. But contact outside of work has so far been limited. I was walking uh, around the mill, uh, as is uh, my usual won't, you know, to talk to various people. I think this is a very important part of my job, to get to know people. Now, it's very, very easy to talk to an English person and say, how are you, inquire about the family, etc. But uh, I find that I don't stop and talk to the Pakistani labour. And uh, I, I really believe that this is my fault. Uh, there's possibly a language problem. Maybe, maybe this is an excuse. Uh, I think it is. Uh, and uh, I do feel that I should do more in the future, particularly in this way, to uh, get to know these people better. I, I didn't think I was prejudiced uh, against them, but uh, upon reflection, I should think that this is possibly an excuse on my part. And uh, I certainly uh, ought to do more in the future. Bradford is also honest enough to admit that the Pakistanis keep the city moving. Official statements have claimed that they couldn't maintain services without them. The leader of the council has publicly acknowledged the debt and can also laugh about it. Alderman Ted Newby. One of my experiences, I sat on a bus upstairs and the two Irishmen and labourers who had met probably for the first time for a long number of years and they were both tight. And the Pakistani conductor came up and said, first please. And this chap got his hand in his pocket and looked up and said, To a Calcutta. And the conductor said, Well, you want to go back to your own country? A non-English speaking Pakistani villager is totally nonplussed on arrival in Great Britain. And when Karachi came to Bradford, the results were somewhat bizarre. The Pakistani community is centered mainly on the Lum Lane area, old industrial housing near the city centre. This has been the starting ground for many immigrants in Bradford. 
Germans, Poles, Italians, Hungarians, West Indians. Here, Pakistan lives its own life with its shops, its banks, its tailors, its restaurants. The housing isn't good, but it's better than other ghettos in the country. The coloured communities may live behind closed doors, but it's hard for Yorkshiremen to resist a bargain. Turn around, John, that's it. Smile at him. Television! All your friends will see your television now. Yes, yes. Tom Haggerty lives slap in the centre. His reactions are typical. It's OK, yeah, I like it. It done us a lot of good. If it hadn't have been for the coloured people about here, we'd have been in a, a real state. They boosted the trade about two or three hundred percent more than it was before they came. Well, we have to try and get everything we've... Uh, uh, anything they ask us for. Uh, Gunga peas and striped beans and cornmeal. More like hen, hen food shop now than a green grocer's shop. And uh, there's mangoes and all this different kind of food what they like. We've had to learn the job practically all over again. Green chilies and yams and cocos, sweet potatoes, uh, ginger and what they give the police horses and uh, what else is it? Oh, there's the green bananas and the plantains, but we have all the uh, different kinds of fish for them. Uh, do you want to see some of this fish? This, uh, uh, these is the red-tailed snappers from the West Indies. And then we have uh, flying fish. That's mostly for the Barbados people. And then we have some headless snappers. We also have the the um, salt beef for them. You don't want to see this day up, do you? Oh, this is salt beef. Beautiful. Eat it raw, you know, like you. And then we have the pig's tails, pig snouts. Oh. This is the pig snouts, or pig's masks. I was going to call it something else, I know, couldn't we? And then you've... In this one we have waggers, pig's tails. I better get a big one out for you, didn't I? Them's the pig's tails. The Jamaicans like these when they've been on the booze and uh, boil all these up. It helps to sober them up, isn't that what they do? Well, the Pakistanis is, is all right. I mean, they mind their own business to us. Uh, with some real good customers among them. Of course, there's some roughens, same as anything else, but there's roughens amongst our lot, isn't there? But the majority of them who come in here, well, they're real good. Not everything is good for the Pakistani bachelor. There's still a tendency to crowd together in low-rent slums. This man is one of nine Pakistanis in this house who pay one pound a week each to sleep three to a room between their nightly shifts. There have been only 12 compulsory decrowding orders in Bradford in 10 years. But the old fears of disease die hard. Dr. Walter Dalton is Deputy Medical Officer of Health. Tuberculosis um, in Bradford, uh, about 5% of the population are immigrants and they give rise to about 65% of the cases. Venereal disease in Bradford at its highest rate in 1964, uh, eight out of 10 cases of gonorrhea were in immigrants. I'm very pleased to be able to say that that figure has fallen. Wherever you get a lot of unattached young men, it is inevitable uh, that sexual promiscuity will take place. Uh, and here I would make the point that they do not bring venereal disease into the country. This is a disease which they contract in the country from the professional white girls. The early disorders of a large rush of unattached immigrants are being sorted out. On Bradford's particular horizon, there's a small gleam of hope. 30 yards from the old slums, the council flats of a new Bradford. The average waiting time for a two-bedroom council flat with modern kitchen is six months. It's a time which applies to any family. This Pakistani family, mill workers, pay four pounds a week for rent, electricity and fuels. The Pakistanis themselves say that many of their families are being housed like this.
According to the council, the feeling has been that if there's a need, meet it. I wouldn't know of. How many immigrants we have living in Bradford Council houses? Because we don't keep a record of either colour, race or creed. In the field of housing, Bradford has been a pioneer. Mrs Sheila Allen is senior lecturer in sociology at Bradford University. Bradford has a good record. As far as I know, there is no discrimination in council housing. It's been suggested to me that this is mainly because immigrants do not apply to be put on the list because the rents are considered too high. I don't know if this is true, but certainly compared to the discriminatory policies of Birmingham, we have nothing like this in Bradford. Uh, ladies and respected guests, we are going to present a dress parade depicting dresses worn in various parts of Pakistan. To start Tea, sandwiches and high fashion before a mixed audience in a backyard clinic in Bradford last week. It's the Pakistani women who are brightening the drab image of the immigrant mill worker. Their association regularly meets to show their own flag to a slightly incredulous Yorkshire. It is six yards in length and 42 inches wide. I have pleasure of introducing to you the traditional bride from Pakistan. Our brides usually cover their face before the marriage ceremony is performed. Bride's dress is always colorful and is heavily embroidered with pure gold and silver threads. This lady here is dressed up as bride and she is wearing traditional red garara. This dress is very popular in Pakistan and is called a bridal dress as well. Now this little girl is presenting a dress which is getting very popular among the younger generation of Pakistan. <laughs> she is wearing a dress, a sag dress more or less with tight trousers and dopatta on. The boy is wearing ceremonial dress worn on special occasions by our men. Polite niceties on the surface, underneath the thick current of prejudice. This 16-year-old schoolgirl came to England eight years ago. I was standing with a friend of mine, she was half cast. So we were both standing and a, a, a boy came behind us, he just pushed us and he says, get away from us, walk in here. And he just run past us. Well, I thought that was the most awful or most cruel thing anybody could have said to me. After that, I cried for a week, I, I didn't come to school for a week. When you start calling names like that, you just don't feel like living in England, you feel like no. going back to your own country straight away. They wouldn't talk to you, they just ignore you, they, they spit on you and they did everything. They were very cruel. It was hard to get friends at school and they, they treated terribly. I had to bribe them with sweets and monies and everything I could think of. As long as I had monies and sweets, they'd be my friend. But as soon as I finished with them, they would finish with me. See. Does your little girl speak English? Yes, she can speak English. Come along, Loda. Come along. Yeah. You come with us, please. Bradford pioneered the Immigrant Children's Clinic. Just two years ago, they started special immunization centers. At one time, they were saddled with 1,200 children a year. They managed. Um, what is your little girl's name? Sheila. 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 And where do you live? I live in uh, 53 Horton Grange Road. 53 Horton Grange Road. Horton Grange Road. Which country do you come from? I come from Pakistan. Yes. In charge of the clinic and both languages is Dr. George Bell. I like them very much, as I say, having lived out east and appreciated both the traditions and behaviorisms, if you like, of those people. I was always very happy there, and it's been rather a joy to feel that I'm still, to some extent, in contact with them now. Well, I should think Bradford's an extremely happy centre for immigrants, especially those from the Far East. I've spoken to quite a number now who have come and settled here, and they seem happy both with their reception as newcomers and with their ultimate experience as citizens here. The immigrant children get exactly the same examination as all other 
children, but in addition they have, we're looking for three particular things. Uh, one is sensitivity to tuberculosis, because they're particularly prone to get tuberculosis. Anemia, which again, they're very uh, prone to get. About 10% of the children have quite a degree of anemia. And thirdly, uh, infestation with intestinal worms. About one in five of the children have an infestation. In Bradford, two years ago, the death rate among Pakistani babies was 48 per thousand. Now it's down to 33. But some see discrimination even in a health check. This applies to all coloured children before they enter school. So friends of mine who are teachers with their children born in Bradford have to uh, send their children for a health check just as much as the newly arrived immigrant from Pakistan. This, of course, naturally, they object to very strongly. I think there should be some form of discrimination. I, I speak as a doctor. Um, the positive discrimination which seeks out needs and meets those needs. And if there are special needs in the immigrant community which our own host community does not have, I would feel it my duty to see that those needs were met. So I would say quite emphatically, yes, we should do not more, but perhaps different things uh, to meet the specific needs of our immigrants. On an official level, Bradford has tried to keep the door open. It started the dispersal system in schools to avoid a heavy concentration of coloured children. In any one school, they feel that a 25% quota gives coloured children a better chance of integration. Bradford's local newspaper was the first to print a supplement in the home language of the Pakistanis. Can you tell me now, what is the uh, difference between a hardback and a paperback book? And Bradford glimpses the future before anyone else. These are Sikh, Pakistan and Indian teachers being prepared for English schools. In a month's time, they start. How ready are they? Or we? In the, you know, hard paperbacks. Good. Tom Haggerty's bluff Yorkshire tolerance on one side and on the other, a growing feeling of belonging. The Pakistan Sweet Center, a rendezvous for chat. <clears throat> I have lived here for quite a number of years. And believe you me, I feel as if I'm a Bradford lad. Because even if I try to go away from Bradford, it is very difficult for me because these streets, these roads, these people here, I almost feel as if I'm a native of this particular city. But the new citizens aren't fooled into believing that everything in the garden's lovely. Mohammed Beg is a Pakistani businessman. This whole thing, this whole problem of color, our immigration here in this country is a political stunt. It isn't a big problem. This country needs labor. They got us from our own country. We have come because we wanted to work. You wanted the labor, we wanted to work. We have come into this country, we're working. Now mind you, we are only <laughs> allowed to work on sort of... Uh, <laughs> we are only given certain jobs which uh, you won't do. <laughs> You see, I can, I can give you a reference of your own Gurnada television, independent television, trying to be the custodian of sort of uh, uh, social welfare and social uplift for the immigrants. You tell me how many Pakistanis have you got on your list? How many Pakistanis are working in Gurnada? If, if you people who are supposed to be a very strong liaison between the public, be, between the different communities of the public, if you haven't broken this social bar within your own circle of this department or this circle of uh, Gurnada Television or Independent Television Association or BBC 1 or BBC 2, who else is going to do it? If by integration you mean that the, you will find coloured people represented throughout the employment structure, uh, throughout the educational structure and so on, this is, of course, what I would like to see. I am very doubtful whether this will happen. In fact, I think at present the situation is probably more difficult than it has been. But this is not a, something which Bradford can settle. It depends so much on what is done nationally by the government. It appears to me they're very difficult to get across to. But at the same time, I have some feeling that the leadership has not been united. It's been a little fragmented.
but it's not easy to get across to them. And yet integration has looked to me as if it means the Bradford citizens going across to the Pakistanis. We are ratepayers of Bradford. Certainly and surely there are certain civic gatherings here, social gatherings, uh, sponsored by the local councillors. They never take the pain of inviting a Pakistani or Indian to come in and dine with them, chat with them, and discuss things with them. At least I haven't uh, had an occasion, or at least most of my friends who are very highly educated chaps. I doubt if they have ever been invited, although we should be, because we are citizens of Bradford. Citizens of Bradford, yes, but citizens apart. These are Pakistani children born in the city. Their normal language is broad west riding. They are taught Urdu by their elders. Yes, Zena. Yes, you? Baba, They hold to their language and their faith. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ تَلْفَحُ وُجُوهَهُمُ النَّارُ وَهُمْ فِيهَا كَالِحُونَ Islam is not an easy faith. It demands a month's fast every year, prayer five times a day, and the threat of excommunication after three weeks' absence from the mosque but it draws the Pakistani like a magnet. Five years ago, the faithful in Bradford numbered two. Today, 4,000. The strength of Islam is shown by the fact that three terraced houses were knocked together to make this mosque at a cost of 6,000 pounds. <laughs> It appears to me that the Yorkshireman is very tolerant. He tends to uh, perhaps live in his own palace and rather ignore those who uh, are round about. And this is uh, an ideal setting, uh, that live and let live. Uh, they may think they're queer. In fact, to a Yorkshireman, almost anybody except a Yorkshireman is queer, uh, but that's accepted. Uh, and so I think this general tolerance goes out in the attitude not only to Lancashiremen and Londoners, uh, but to Pakistanis, to Jamaicans, to, to other folk in general. The only thing I request from English colleagues is to be a bit more patient. You see, after all, we can't turn ourselves overnight into English people. After all, to adopt a culture, it takes time. If by integration you mean full interracial marriage, my answer is emphatically no. I think there is, a, I notice this very much with the young people um, of Bradford and indeed throughout the country, there is increasing interracial tolerance. In fact, on the whole, the young people are very tolerant indeed. And I think many of them would say, if I fell in love, I would feel free to marry. Uh, but this is not so. Uh, of a number of their parents, and it is certainly not so of the parents of immigrant children. But they, even less than our own elder generation, do not want interracial marriage. I don't like it. Not yet. We are not matured enough, not this generation, not the people, working people here. I personally think that we are not matured enough for intermarriages. If Pakistani people then tend to stick with Pakistani, or if they're English, they tend to stick with English people. Well, that's a selfish attitude to look at, don't you think it so? Is. I mean, if uh, a young generation starts mixing with other uh, young people, let's say we start mixing up with English people, English people start mixing with Indian people and all this, well, we are the generation which will, you know, make, make an advantage and an improvement on this world. Can I make you understand? Can I? It's only those people who have got a bit of sense here that think that these people who are nothing now could be something tomorrow. They're going to be something tomorrow. <laughs>